Hi, this is Millie Kay. It's Thursday, May 11th, 2017. And the subject of this video is the accident at the Oroville Dam river valve chamber in 2009. And in order to explain the accident, I want to show you this cutaway graphic of diversion tunnel number two. There's two diversion tunnels under the dam and this is the second one. It's 35 feet in diameter, concrete lined, and within this tunnel there is a chamber that's called a river valve chamber, and it's because there are valves inside that chamber that they, they use to uh, pull water out of the reservoir, so it goes uh, from the reservoir through the valves and then down the tunnel and out. And within that diversion tunnel there is a ring over here. There, It's a baffle ring, also called an energy dispersion ring. And the purpose of an energy dispersion ring is to calm the water down so it's not so destructive and turbulent. And it dissipates the energy of the water. And within this river valve chamber there is a concrete platform where the employees go they're separated from the uh, where the water's going through by this pressure relief wall also known as a breakaway wall and they access this platform through a access tunnel that goes up to the Hyatt power plant so go through this access tunnel and onto this concrete platform. And just keep in mind that the energy dispersion ring, the old one, was removed before this accident happened. Just a few months before this accident happened, the Department of Water Resources had removed the old baffle ring because it was broken. The main report that I'm relying on for this video is the investigation summary, summary by the State of California Division of Occupational Safety and Health. That's the uh, California OSHA or Cal OSHA. One of the best summaries I found is the abstract or part of the abstract of their report. The accident takes place when five employees are directed to go to the river valve chamber of the Hyatt Power facility inside of Oroville Dam. The employees are directed to open the river valves to 100% on July 22, 2009. When the valves were opened to 85%, the breakaway wall was vacuumed, pulled away, and downstream into the 35-foot diameter river diversion tunnel. The vacuum eliminated the lights and sucked any loose unattached materials or equipment in the access areas above the river valve chamber toward the river valve chamber. The vacuum knocked three of the employees off their feet and toward the tunnel. The vacuum pulled two employees over the edge of the river valve chamber concrete platform. Employee number four was hanging over the end of the valve holding on to the bent and twisted metal railing. Employee number five was hanging over the edge of the river valve concrete platform, holding on to the bent rail and was struck by various tools and equipment that was located in the access tunnel to the river valve chamber. So I'll just show you that graphic again so that you can see and get an idea. Next I'm going to read the findings and keep in mind that Cal OSHA's findings are just their findings. Findings lead to conclusions, conclusions lead to citations, and citations are appealable. But I find that these findings really give a picture of what happened as long as you keep in mind that they're findings. So, there's 20 and I'm going to read every one of them. The river valve system includes the river dispersion tunnel, 
river valve chamber, river valve tunnel ventilation tunnels, access tunnel to river valve chamber, and the equipment and machinery in the river valve chamber. Vacuum sensors, motors, spherical valves, cone valves, breakaway door, communication system, oil alarms, water level alarms, and associated electrical connections. The energy dispersion ring was removed from the river valve system in April of 2009. This is a critical safety device in the operation of the river valves. It was not replaced. DWR stated that the ring was not replaced because DWR did not have the time with the upcoming season. Cross-section model of river valve area showing deflector ring energy dissipation ring was an integral part of the engineered system involving the river valves and the 35 foot diameter diversion tunnel. Department of Dam Safety was not consulted and did not approve the removal of the energy dispersion ring. When DWR makes any change to the dam, they must get approval from this group and they did not get approval. No party, body, group, or department reviewed, analyzed, or inspected the river valve system to determine the hazards created by removal of the energy dispersion ring. The employees in the river valve chamber during operation of the river valves have limited access as they are in the ventilation of the discharge volume exposed to airflow of over 100 miles per hour. DWR wanted to determine the destructive effects of removal of the energy dispersion ring by opening the river valves to 100%. The cone valves have historically failed when operated at 100%. DWR had no evidence of ever opening the river valves to 100% during the life of the system, but decided to operate them in this capacity without the energy dispersion ring. Opening of both of the river valves to 100% is a flow rate of 5,400 cubic feet per second. Employees express safety concerns with operating the river valves to 100% because this is not the way the system was engineered or designed to be used. Modeling studies done when dam was constructed and in 1993 by UC Davis both concluded that the operation of the river valves in the tunnel should not be done or severely limited without the energy dispersion ring. DWR was aware of these studies and had copies and a video of the actual test. The tests and studies and original engineered design were ignored and the operation of the river valves was approved. When the energy dispersion ring was removed, DWR failed to evaluate the river valve chamber and potential hazards employees would be exposed to while in the chamber activating the river valves. The river valve chamber breakaway wall was never inspected for integrity or safety for over 40 years. The vacuum alarm on the breakaway wall in the river valve chamber was disconnected and not in operation when valves were operated, and DWR stated they have never inspected or maintained this alarm. The access was limited during the operation of the river valves. Employees could not escape the chamber due to the hurricane-like winds. Engineering branch chief stated that the winds calculated to be in excess of 100 miles per hour. Employees in this river valve chamber were blown off of their feet and into walls and downstream. Corroded bolts were identified that were intended to secure the breakaway wall. 23 failed before accident, corroded and no evidence of shearing. Also, foam sealant had been placed in the past by DWR employees around door to keep water out. Foam was located in area where bolts were corroded. This indicates knowledge of corrosion and failure of the bolts and seal of the door. The Hyatt plant operating supervisor was in the control room when the accident occurred and noticed the liquid level alarms rising above normal levels, 18 feet, near the river valve chamber. The operator attempted to contact the employees in the river valve chamber via phone in the room, 
The noise in the room was so loud the employees could not hear the phone and be warned of the hazards. Airflow in the entire dam complex changed and vacuum suction was created. Metal doors were ripped from their hinges due to vacuum created. Doors were located above River Val Chamber in another tunnel hundreds of feet away. Employees in the Hyatt plant attempted to enter the access tunnels during the accident to get to the river valve chamber and the vacuum that was created would not allow them to stand and walk to enter at the entrance. The cone valve is used in the tunnel which is confined and demands high amounts of air at high velocities during discharge. The American Society of Mechanical Engineers Hydropower Technical Committee, the Hydraulic Structures 3rd Edition, states that this type of valve, fixed cone dispersion valve, should not be used or set to discharge into a confined space. So those are the findings. The conclusion of Cal OSHA is DWR contracted with the University of California Davis to perform a study on the use of the cone valves and the need for the energy dispersion ring. DWR failed to follow the recommendations of this report that the flow should be limited without the energy dispersion ring in place as originally designed. DWR conducted a destructive test by operating the cone valves at 100%. A destruction test should never be done in this manner. The valves were rated at 2700 CFS with the, with the energy dispersion ring and after the removal of the energy dispersion ring the valve should have been derated to a lower flow rate. The test to derate the valves should have been done in very small increments. This is industry standard and good engineering practice. The cone valves were used and operated in a manner where the speed flow of the water through the valves created a vacuum in the river valve system that endangered employees and caused serious injuries. So that's their conclusion and then uh, they issued six citations uh, and this was January 15th, 2010 and I'll cover these citations in a minute. The uh, Cal OSHA issued the citations to the Department of Water Resources on January 21st, 2010. They were given citation and notification of penalty and they're there's documents for each citation and giving them their appeal rights and um, so that was January of 2010 and on February 4th 2010 Department of Water Resources filed their appeal with the appeals board and there were six forms, six appeal forms. They look like this. Some have areas have check marks for pretty standard stuff and then um, one section gives them a chance to explain um, their reasons and for appeal and I'll go over those too when I summarize. The best way to summarize it for you is I went to the uh, Cal OSHA's annual report for 2010 and there's a section where they summarize this case and you'll see here it gives the uh, the title 8 section of the California codes that apply to each citation and then the uh, citation verbiage is listed here and it gives the classification of each one as you'll see there's general and then serious and there's one citation that was willful serious and it carries the largest proposed penalty and the total of the penalties was um, that were proposed was a hundred and forty one thousand three hundred and seventy five dollars and um, I'm going to read these as well the six citations to the Department of Water Resources they failed to train employees on changes to the emergency action plan. They failed to inspect river valve chamber and operation of river valve chamber system after modifications. They failed to train employees after new hazards into workplace. 
introduced. They failed to maintain machinery and equipment in service in a safe operating condition. Vacuum alarm disconnected and bolts securing breakaway wall were corroded. They failed to keep the river valve chamber from being used and or operated without the energy dispersion ring, ignoring the original engineered design. And they failed to evaluate workplace of river valve chamber to determine that it was a permit required space that was created after removal of energy dispersion ring and operation of valves. So to summarize their appeals, uh, overall what, what they said, Department of Water Resources, their explanation, uh, there were some uh, general things, but overall they said that Removal of the energy dispersion ring was not a potential hazard. This is what they believed. They believed the breakaway wall was designed to fail and was not a worker safety mechanism. And that the river valve chamber is doesn't meet the definition of uh, a confined space according to the codes. And then the main one here, the uh, the one that carries the highest classification and penalty, the willful and serious classification. Uh, to that, they said that, uh, well, there were some things. They said there were numerous uh, inaccuracies in the citations and uh, referencing to the reports by Cal OSHA. And, but the main thing is they did not feel that it rose to the willful standard. So that pretty well summarizes the uh, the citations. Um, I don't know how much they ended up paying. I do know from looking at the uh, Cal OSHA Appeals Board minutes for April 11th, 2012, within those minutes, which this was, what, two years after the appeals were filed, uh, Within those minutes, there's a section of orders of administrative law judges, and the, the ones on this list, it uh, involves written order issued by an administrative law judge after a pre-hearing conference in which the Division of Occupational Safety and Health and the employer agree to settle an appeal without a hearing. And if you scroll down, you'll see California Water Resources is on that list, and here's the uh, the reference numbers for their appeals, uh, all six. So we know they settled, and it's no big secret. In in a uh, presentation that DWR did in 2015, they they explain uh, or summarize the settlement agreement between Cal OSHA, DWR, and the Operating Engineers Union. And so it shows that they settled in March of 2012, so uh, about three years after the accident. And it basically involved that they, DWR could not operate the river valve system until it was refurbished or replaced, including that baffle ring, the energy dispersion ring. Uh, required third party oversight and no but he could be in the river valve chamber during future operations of the river valve outlet system. And although the scope of this uh, video is really just to discuss the accident, I do know that they did replace the baffle ring in 2016 and they did uh, make the system remote controllable by relocating the all of the controls up to the uh, power plant uh, to the turbine deck so that they can monitor with cameras and uh, operate by remote control. So that's going to conclude my video on the accident and here's a photo of the old energy dispersion ring. Um, I'd like to give credit to the Department of Water Resources publications for any photos that I've used in this video and I'd like to thank you for viewing. I hope you will like, subscribe, and share, and I'll see you later.